in this video, we're going to talk about AI tools to create content specifically. I'm going to take you over the shoulder and I'm going to create actual content using chat GPT, latest AI technology that is taking the internet by storm. We're going to talk about how and if you should be leveraging this technology to take over your content writing completely. Let's get into it. If you don't know, ChatGPT pretty much broke the internet last week, crossing 1 million users in less than five days. For context, it took Netflix 41 months, it took Facebook 10 months, and it took Instagram two and a half months to cross the 1 million user mark. ChatGPT is built by a company called OpenAI, which builds a ton of AI products, and they recently released ChatGPT. It's a product that allows you to ask questions directly to an AI in a conversational interface. Now I've tested plenty of AI tools, including Jasper, which is also a great tool, but ChatGPT is really the first AI tool that I've really played with that has got me seeing how this could quickly become our future. And this has really sparked a lot of interest and a lot of conversation in the marketing industry about how ChatGPT will figure into our futures, but specifically a use case that's being talked about and leveraged a lot right now is to just let this type of technology write content for you, specifically for your website, blog posts, resource guides, et cetera. In this video, I really wanna deep dive into this concept of letting AI write content for you. Does Google allow it? Is it effective? Will it rank? Is it duplicate? And is it really worth it at this stage in the game? So let's start by talking about Big G, Google, and what their thoughts on AI content are. This past year, Google released the Helpful Content Update. And they've since rolled out four updates to it since they originally rolled it out in August. Now you can read through this entire thing on your own time. It is good to go through because it does talk about what Google's looking for from content, especially now in 2023 moving forward. But there's one line in here that I want to focus on. Are you using extensive automation to produce content on many topics? In other words, if you're using AI, it's frowned upon. It's not something that we want to rank and index because all content should be unique and original. Now, I did some additional research on this as well to see if other reputable sites and what they thought about AI content regarding Google search indexation and how that content could perform in search. And I found this article on Search Engine Journal, and it talks about if you should use AI for SEO purposes, and they make the argument that Google knows how to determine and detect AI content and that this type of content violates Google's guidelines, specifically those set forth in the helpful content update. So there's two reputable sources, both Google and Search Engine Journal, that are talking about how AI content is frowned upon, if not won't be indexed, it's not gonna be effective when it comes to SEO performance, and you should focus on creating unique content using humans. Now I've been in this game for almost 15 years, and I have seen plenty of Google PR campaigns, and this kind of feels like one, specifically because there's a lot of SEOs in the game that I trust, who have been using AI content and having a lot of success. Specifically, Matt Diggity, he's been creating a lot of content about how he uses AI for his affiliate websites to crank out content. You can check him out on YouTube and here on Twitter. He's got a thread where he talks about his strategy of using AI content and the results that it drives. Another is from Nathan Gotch, another SEO that I really respect and trust. He has gotten a lot of success in terms of rankings using 100% AI generated content. So what do I think? Well, I've been doing this long enough to know when Google is farting out a lot of information to try and curb the speed of this growth. I've seen this with links before in the past where they tell you that you can't buy links, that certain links don't work, they're not indexed, but I've gotten plenty of dirty links, including in 2022, and they still work, they still drive results. Google pushes out this information to try and curb the growth of these types of things because it protects their algorithm. So they're going to do everything that they can to try and stop this type of behavior because they don't want to crowd up the results with crap results. The best thing that you can do is test it for yourself. I wouldn't dive all in on creating 100% AI content just because I saw a tweet about it. I would create it and test it out to see how it performs for my websites or for my clients. So let's actually jump over to ChatGPT and let's see if we can use it to create some valuable content for us. You can access ChatGPT by going to chat.openai.com. Right now it's free, it might be paid by the time you see this, but you can play around with it for yourself to get a feel for it. Now the cool thing about this is you can just literally ask it whatever you want and it will spit back a response. It's very limited because it's not connected to the internet. It's not great with recent events. It will openly admit when it cannot cover something, specifically when it comes to something commercial. Like if you ask it, what are the best shoes for summertime? I can be able to answer that for you. So that's one limitation right there that you need to consider if you're gonna use this to create content. So the first prompt that I gave it is for our agency Webris. We specialize in working with law firms. So I told it I need to write a blog post about local SEO for law firms. And what it does is spit back an outline for me. Six key points here that should be included in this. Now, this in itself does have some value. We'll talk about how much value it has. 
but it's a good starting point, right? And the key thing about using ChatGPT or really any AI for me is not giving it the initial prompt up first. If you just tell it, write me a blog post about local SEO, it'll write it for you, but it'll do it in 15 seconds or less. However, if you want to get the most out of a tool like this, you almost have to train it a little bit. You have to give it bit by bit, feed it bit by bit. It takes a little bit more time, but allows it to give you much more specific and refined answers. Again, if you give it something very broad general, it's going to spit back general information. But if you take this and go through it line by line and have it spit back for you, you can actually build a whole article. So what I did is I just started copy and pasting each one of these bullets back to it. So the first one I took is explain what local SEO is, why it's so important. What is local SEO and why it's so important? It spits it out right here. This then becomes the introduction for the article. Then I took point two, key components of uh, local SEO for law firms, key components, spit it in here. And then I just went through and start, what was the text message that I had to write to my mom to see if that would work. Uh, but then I go through this bullet by bullet, H2 by H2, if you will, having it write every part of this article for me. So I went through and I had it write every single part of this article. After I did that, I got all the parts to it. I copied it and I pasted it here into ClearScope. ClearScope is a tool that we use uh, to understand keyword performance when it comes to trying to optimize a piece of content and how it will project and perform in search. So I took the, the keyword, local SEO for law firms, and then I pasted this entire article in here. 1,300 words about with about a C plus content grade. So off rip, it's not very well optimized for SEO, but we do have a full article here that it's not great if you read through it, but it's something that you probably see on like a PBN or a low quality guest post just to crank out content. This would be the equivalent of paying like 50 to 100 bucks for an article. It's not great, but the body is here and it's workable. Again, the content grade isn't great, but that's pretty simple to fix by just going through and fixing all the key replacements inside the article. Now, the next part of this is taking the article and pasting it into something like Copyscape, which will tell you if this is unique or not. So I took the article, pasted it in here. It does cost, this is a paid tool if you want to use it yourself. Uh, and it tells you if this content is found on the internet before. And this is something that this article refer referred to on Search Engine Journal is that it is able to detect if it's AI content or if it was other content that this content was generated from. So it did find two results that were similar, but when we open these up, there's really no comparison. Yes, there's some sentences or some words that might be construed as similar, but they are definitely unique. So after going through this, two things I find. One is that the content does appear to be unique according to Copyscape. I don't think there would be an issue with duplicate content penalties. However, the content is not up to the quality level, both in terms of the readability and the search engine performance level. It would still require a good amount of human editing to get it where it needs to be. So this begs the question, Ryan, are you or would you use ChatGPT to create the content for you? The answer is the most typical SEO answer on the planet, and that's it depends. Here's what I would use it for. I would use it for generic commodity content, about pages, service pages, e-commerce product description pages, boilerplate text info. That doesn't necessarily need to have any creative copy or thought leadership injected into it, and that's key, right? So if you want to do like top 10 shoelaces for summertime, something like that, this would be a good fit for. Top 10 roof styles for houses in South Florida. That would be a good topic because it does have the right information in terms of going through or five reasons why you need hurricane windows in Florida, right? And then again, if you go through and iterate on each one of these, it expounds on each part of this and it does dig deep and you can use it as a pretty solid research tool when you don't know what it is that you're talking about. Now, again, something like best roofs or do I need hurricane windows in Florida doesn't require you to be a thought leader. When I say thought leader, that means opinion. That means having a thesis, a unique point of view on a topic that will help you stand out from the competitors. So when it comes to selling something like windows, you don't necessarily need to be a thought leader for this type of content. You just need that content on your website. But when it comes to something like local SEO for law firms, you do want to be seen as a thought leader. So you don't want to just crank out generic content using AI tools. That's not going to help you as a business to position yourself as a thought leader. And that's where I draw the line, right? I think using AI writers and automating this entire process for generic boilerplate content is great. It's fine. I think it's actually ready to go right now. You just need to hew at it at the end. But for anything deep B2B where you really need to position yourself as a thought leader, somebody who's voiced understands how to solve problems of the target customer. Again, especially if you're like an agency or consultant, I would stay far away from using these types of tools. You can use it to do some research, to dive into some parts of the article that you want to write. I think ChatGPT is a really good tool for that, but I would not use it to write the entire article just yet. However, what this really has opened my eyes to is that we are getting to the point 
I would say over the next 12 to 24 months, where this technology is really going to start to heat up. I think the next version of ChatGPT is really going to blow our hair back. And it's really going to have us start to question what we do on a daily basis. I think using it to write emails, you saw me use it to write a text message to my mom to test it out, generating contracts, generating appointment requests, all that type of stuff. That's where this technology gets really, really interesting. Things where you don't have to have a very unique thought inside of the text and you just need to get it out quickly. I think we're there right now and I think we're going to see some very powerful iterations on top of this technology. That's going to save us a ton of time when it comes to writing anything in the future. But for right now, if your content needs to be positioned as a thought leader, I would not use these tools for it. So be careful what you see on the internet about people talking about this because you have to understand the type of content that you need to create in order for this to be effective. We're having a ton of really good conversations about this inside of our Pro Slack community. If you want access to it, just drop me a comment below and I'll send you the link. If not, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.